Hey guys, I hope you're all having a great day so far. Today I have an updated best and worst of e.l.f. cosmetics. e.l.f. is kind of my comfort brand. I've been purchasing from e.l.f. longer than pretty much any other brand. I think a lot of people have a similar kind of makeup origin story to me because I've heard a lot of other people say the same thing, but e.l.f. is the brand that really got me into makeup. Back when I was in high school, I would just go to the e.l.f. aisle in Target and I loved that I could just play and experiment with different types of products and most products back then were between one and three dollars. Now of course they have raised their prices but I also do think that the quality has gone up a little bit with the price increases. Now that's not to say every product is great and I'm going to share the ones that I think are actually worth trying and ones that I think are worth skipping or at least the ones that didn't work for me. Obviously I haven't tried everything from e.l.f. but I'm going to be sharing everything that I currently own, as well as some things that I've tried and I didn't end up keeping for one reason or another, but that I still have a good enough memory of that I can share my opinion of that product with you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go by category. So we're gonna start with face and then eyes, lips. So let's start with primers. I'm not usually a big believer in primers. More often than not, I skip primer altogether, but e.l.f. does make quite a few primers. I have all three of their putty primers. They actually do sell these minis in a trio set where you can get all three for $10. Normally the full sizes of these are $10 each. So I would recommend getting the trio if you're interested in these putty primers because that way you're able to try them all, see which one you like. From what I've seen from other project panners, these do take a long time to go through as it is. So I think even the minis will probably last you quite a while. So these putty primers, they have their original poreless putty primer, their luminous putty primer, and their matte putty primer. I've been testing all three of these out for the last month or so. And to me, my favorite is the poreless putty primer. This is the one that I actually notice a difference from. The other two, I don't notice so much of a difference. So the poreless putty primer is obviously designed to smooth out your pores, create a nice smooth canvas for makeup. I like to just take a little bit on my finger, a little bit goes a long way with this, and just tap it in the areas of my face where I want a little bit of a smoothing effect. Typically, you know, next to my nose, a little bit on my forehead. And I do notice a difference when I wear this on just one side of my face and not the other. The side that does have this on, it looks a lot smoother, and I do feel like throughout the day, the makeup wears just a little bit better with this underneath. So I wasn't expecting much from this primer, especially not being a huge primer fan. And most primers, I don't notice a big difference, but I do feel like the Poreless Putty Primer, I, I notice a little something. So that one is my favorite of the three. The Luminous Putty Primer is luminous. If you look up close, it does have small bits of shimmer in it, kind of like a pearly shimmer. But when I apply it all over my face, I do notice that shimmery, <laughs> luminous effect. It does add a little bit of luminosity to your makeup, so it does what it is supposed to do. But personally, for me, luminous primers, I just, I don't really have a use for them. I would prefer a primer that's going to either have a smoothing effect or make my makeup last longer, and I don't really feel like this one does that for me. And the matte putty primer, it does look a little bit matte as you first apply it, but so does the poreless putty primer. I don't feel like the matte primer actually controls oil and shine throughout the day, though. Like, by the end of the day, on the days that I've worn this on just one side of my face and not the other, I feel like both sides of my face by the end of the day have the same amount of shine to them. So it's not going to just stop your oil glands from producing oil. Um, it does have a little bit of a mattifying effect to it at first, but I don't think it makes a big enough difference for it to be worth it. That was just my experience with these three, but everyone's skin type is so different that I still think the trio might be a good idea to try since you get to try all three for the same price of one. That way you can sample them all and um, decide if any of them are worth getting in the full size. Moving on to foundation, I've only tried one foundation from e.l.f., at least in recent years. The satin, the Flawless Satin Foundation, so affordable, $6, which it's hard to find foundations that are that affordable these days, but that foundation looked horrible on my skin. It made my skin look dry and textured. It clung to dry patches I didn't even know I had. <laughs> And that's when you know it is uh, not a good foundation. Now, I do have dry skin, combo to dry depending on the time of year, but I do have dry skin pretty much year round. So if you have dry skin, I would stay far away from that foundation. Maybe if you have oily skin, it might work well for you. But I, yeah, sadly that did not work for me. Oh, I did try the Camo Powder Foundation, but I got it in the wrong shade, so I feel like I can't really give it a fair review. 
but based on my experience with the wrong shade, I don't really have much interest in trying the correct shade because it just, it felt so dry on my skin. I even tried using it as a setting powder rather than a foundation once just to see. And it just, it looked so bad. It didn't actually set my concealer either. Like my concealer still felt tacky even though it looked so dry and heavy. Very limited experience that I had with that powder foundation, but it didn't make me want to get the correct shade either. <laughs> Next for concealer, e.l.f. makes a few different concealers. The one that I currently have is the Hydrating Camo Concealer, which you can see I'm almost done with it. And I have really liked this concealer the entire time I've had it. It has good coverage, like one of the highest coverage concealers I've tried. And actually, when I had both this and the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, I felt like they had almost the exact same look on my under eyes. I would say if you're looking for that amount of coverage but you still want something that is a little bit hydrating, not totally matte, this is a really good one. The important thing to keep in mind with this is to just use as little as you can because if you do apply too much, it's going to look heavy, it's going to crease, it's going to look thick on your under eyes. So I like to just do like one dot in the inner part of my under eye, and a little dot in the outside, and that is enough for me to get good coverage without it looking too heavy. I also had the original camo concealer a while back, and that one is a lot more matte. So, you know, not everyone's going to love that. If you have dry under eyes or creepy under eyes, you probably want to stay far away from that one. But if maybe you have minimal fine lines and you want something with really high coverage, that is a good option. Once again, you want to make sure to apply the smallest amount that you possibly can while still getting the coverage that you want because it'll look too thick and heavy otherwise. But I do think that's a good option, especially if you like something that is more matte and high, high coverage and you're willing to deal with the trade-offs of that, like potentially it looking a little bit heavy <laughs> on your skin. So not for everyone, definitely, but I do think the Hydrating Camo Concealer is definitely more dry skin friendly. But now that I've almost used this one up, I, I don't know if I would repurchase it. That's the thing. I think it's kind of, it's good, but now that I've tried some other formulas, it's just not my favorite. The two concealers that I like more than this are the Kosas and the Urban Decay Stay Naked. Both of those are obviously high-end, so they are more expensive, but I feel like they're they're worth the extra money for me because they just look a little bit better on my fine lines. Having both of those in my collection, I don't know if I would need to get this one again. Next for powder. Powder is one of the categories that I think e.l.f. does really well. I have tried almost all of their powders and I've liked them all. My top favorite though is the Halo Glow Setting Powder. They make it in a few shades. I have it in light, which is really like a translucent color. This is somehow luminous, but also not glittery or sparkly. I've tried other loose setting powders like the e.l.f. HD Powder in Soft Luminance, which used to be my favorite. That one did still have some tiny little shimmer particles to it which I didn't so much mind back then, but I feel like now that I've tried the Halo Glow, I just like and appreciate this one a little bit more. It is $2 more than the HD powder, but I feel like it's worth the extra $2 for me because it just feels so high-end to me. I talked about this in my recent video about drugstore products that feel high-end. This feels high-end. This does not feel like a drugstore powder to me. I really like this as an under eye setting powder, but I also wear it all over the face. It's what I have on today. I'm also wearing like a glowy setting spray on top, so you know, I'm looking pretty luminous today. Not all of that luminosity is coming from this powder. Yeah, if you're looking for a good translucent loose powder, this one is the best. The best that I've tried. <laughs> but with that being said, the HD powder is a long time staple in e.l.f.'s line. I haven't tried the original HD powder, but the soft luminance one is also good. Just know it does have a little bit of a shimmer to it that you can't really see unless you look at your face really up close or especially like in the car mirror. That's when you can really see it. But otherwise, it, you know, it works well too. I also just used up the sheer tint powder from e.l.f. That one, it seems to be on its way out. It's Marked down on their site, it has been for a while, and it's currently only available in the deep shade. I liked that one. I had the shade Fair Light when I had it, and it's a it was a solid powder, mattifying but not too dry looking, but it did oxidize my makeup just a little bit. So for that reason, not my top, top favorite. And then e.l.f. also does make a really inexpensive powder, their Prime and Stay Finishing Powder, which is only $3.00. And that's a good powder for the price. I also used that one up, I think, last year. A translucent powder isn't going to have a lot of coverage to it, but it does just kind of smooth out your skin and 
set it into place. The packaging on that one though, it almost certainly will break before you finish it up, even if you're super careful with it and you know you don't keep it in like your makeup bag or your purse or something it's probably still gonna break because it's in that super cheap clear packaging that they use for their cheapest products so if you don't mind crappy packaging I do think that's a really good more affordable option. Next for blushes I've tried I think four of the blushes from elf in recent years I currently have two still in my collection. First this is a newer launch from them the luminous putty blush. These putty blushes and bronzers all of the putty products from elf get a lot of hype and I have the Luminous Putty Blush in the shade Maui, which is a really pretty nude neutral pink with a golden shimmer to it. This is Luminous. They are not joking with the name. This is one of those highlighter optional slash just totally unnecessary blushes because it really is like a blush and highlighter in one. This is what I have on my cheeks today. I'm not wearing any highlighter. That's it's all the glow on my cheeks is coming from this product. To me, the glow of this is comparable to something like the Milani baked blushes like you know Milani Luminoso classic example obviously this is a cream whereas that one is a powder but they both have that same pearly almost highlighter like glow to them also I kind of thought that this would be a cream to powder formula for some reason I don't know why I was expecting that but it definitely does stay tacky on your skin it doesn't dry down to a powder finish I really like this I think it looks really pretty on my cheeks I usually will just apply it with either my fingers or a brush. One thing to keep in mind though with the putty blushes and the bronzer, which we'll talk about in just a second, these pots are really small. So here's like a brush that I would often use for cream blush, the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. It's a little big for the container, so you have to kind of work your brush in there. It's a bit annoying. I would have preferred if they had used just a bigger <laughs> container, like something wider. And they could have put the same amount of product in it, but just made it a little bit wider. I think that would have been better. So that's why I often just opt to use my fingers with this, which works well. I feel like with a sponge, I just don't get enough color payoff. So brush or fingers are the way to go with this. These putty cheek products, at least the two I've tried, the Luminous Blush and the Bronzer, they're sheer. They're not very pigmented, which you might like. Not everybody wants a super pigmented blush, you know, especially if you have fair skin. If you don't want it to show up too strong on your cheeks, you might really like that. But there have been a few times I've been using this where I'm like, wow, it's like kind of taking a little bit, a little while to build. But once I get it built up, I really like the color and on me it lasts all day long. By the end of the night, it's still there. I don't set it into place with any powder or powder blush or anything. I just leave it there. I only set my t-zone really when I'm wearing cream blushes and I'm happy with it. I, I like the color a lot. Just really flattering color. It goes with any look. I also have the primer infused blush in the shade Always Cheeky. This is one of the matte ones. They also make a luminous version of this. This matte version I really enjoy. It's very soft. It has that kind of like almost velvety silicone feeling to it. So I, I kind of understand why they call it primer infused even though it's also a silly name but it does have that almost like silicone primer feel to it. I feel like it blends in easily, it's not patchy, um, and I really like this peach color. Another cream blush I tried from e.l.f. I feel like this formula is pretty underrated, the monochromatic multi sticks. I fully used up the shade Glistening Peach last year. This is a beautiful stick blush formula. It is a creamy enough stick where you can draw it directly onto your cheeks and it's not going to be hard to blend out. At least the shade that I had in this though, it was shimmery once again, kind of similar to the Luminous Putty Blush. If you look up close, you will see little bits of shimmer in there. But I did really enjoy the monochromatic multi-stick. You're supposed to also be able to use it on like your eyes and your lips, if you put it on your eyes, it's gonna crease like immediately because it's not the kind of formula that's gonna stay on your eyelids unless you have like the driest eyelids known to man. Um, and on the lips, it was a little bit too frosty for me, but on the cheeks, I really enjoyed it. And then they also have their bite-sized cheek duos. Nice and affordable, you get both a blush and a highlighter in those. I've had a couple of shades of these and I have decluttered them both because they just weren't shades that ended up being that useful for me, but I could have maybe picked a better shade for myself that maybe I would have kept longer, but I had the shades Cantaloupe and Lychee, and Lychee was just a little bit too deep, especially the highlighter was too deep for me. I originally bought it to use the highlighter as a blush topper, but then I realized I don't really use blush toppers. <laughs> I'm just not going to do that. So 
that one ended up I ended up passing on and then cantaloupe was like a very pastel orange that it was fun I bought it because it was a unique shade but then I didn't end up really using it because it was just like such an off-the-wall shade so I might revisit that formula if I ever do see a shade that looks really up my alley but I had no issues with the formula though I thought it was a nice formula especially for three bucks you get a blush and a highlighter in one so that's a pretty good bang for your buck and I think if you find a shade in those that you do like I do recommend them for the bronzer category as far as I can remember I think I've only tried one bronzer from elf and it is the putty bronzer in the shade feeling shady which is kind of the cooler toned really fair option this is similar to the putty blush it is not incredibly pigmented you do have to kind of build it up but I like that, especially because I am someone where most bronzers, if they're not light enough and soft enough for me, like soft enough in tone, I mean, they can tend to look just way too harsh on my skin tone. Like, I have to be very picky about what shades of bronzer I use, and I also just don't like bronzers that are too pigmented. So, to me, the fact that it's kind of more of a sheer formula is a good thing, but you might find it frustrating. Because I do remember the first time I tried this, I actually tried this in a recent video testing out a few e.l.f. things. A few of these things were included in that video, like the putty blush as well. At first I was like, it's kind of not showing up. But then as I kept building it, I was like, wait, okay, there it is. And it looks really pretty, really natural, doesn't look too harsh on me. It almost doesn't look like I'm wearing any bronzer, which is the goal. I don't want it to be obvious that I'm wearing a ton of bronzer. So, of course, I've only tried the lightest shade. I'm not sure if all of the shades are similarly sheer like this one and I do think if your skin tone is much deeper than mine this shade would probably just be way too light on you but I do highly recommend this for a good cooler toned bronzer really contour if you have fair skin I think you might like it so that is everything I've tried at least recently tried from elf in the face category let's now get into the eye category so first I have something I've been raving about non-stop for a, a little while now these are the elf no budge shadow sticks I have the shades copper chic magnetic pull and rose gold I love these I it's funny because I didn't used to buy like eye crayons like this ever. I've been really into one and done shadows lately and just eyeshadows that require minimal effort on my end. And the formula on these is so impressive to me. These, they call them the no budge eyeshadow sticks. On me, they really don't budge as long as if I'm, I do have to make sure if I'm wearing a like emollient sunscreen or moisturizer on my eyelids. Uh, which is most days, I will dust a little bit of setting powder on my eyelids before I apply this, but I don't, I really like that I don't have to use an eyelid primer underneath these, just cuts out an extra step, and for me, they really don't crease, they stay in place all day. Also, like, if I swatch these on the back of my hand, they will be stuck for hours, like, I can wash my hands 10 times and they will still be on there so you have to go in with like an oil-based cleanser to remove them or a makeup remover to me that is a sign of a really long wearing product and i also just think the shades on these are really pretty magnetic pole was the first one i got this is a great taupe color i have heard it compared to the charlotte tilbury eyes to mesmerize cream shadow in oyster pearl yeah really nice cool tone taupe shade this one has more of a satin finish and Copper Chic, I think, is my most worn just because it's such a great everyday color. It's a really soft, warm brown, but it's not an orangey copper. It's not going to be like the color of a penny or anything. The packaging kind of makes it look like it would be, but it's it's a very flattering copper. I've been wearing this a ton lately. And then Rose Gold. I also will sometimes just use this in the inner corner of my eye or all over. So those are the No Bud Shadow Sticks. I think these would be great, especially if you are in a hurry getting ready in the morning, but you still want to wear eyeshadow. You can just throw one of these on and you can get out the door and not have to, you know, mess with a ton of different colors all in one look. So next is a very hyped up eyeshadow product from e.l.f. They're bite-sized quads. I currently have the shade Cream and Sugar, which I got as a gift with purchase. But in the past, I also had rose water and pumpkin pie. From what I've gathered about these and from what I've heard from you guys also is the quality really varies depending on which shade you get. And for me, rose water, it was very crumbly, first of all. The deepest shade in there kept crumbling on me, which was really annoying. And eventually, I just got to the point where it was, I, I didn't want to keep repressing a $3 quad. It was just not worth the effort. 
Also, after about a year of owning that one, I just felt like something changed and the colors were not performing the same way they used to. They were hardly showing up on my eyes. Maybe the shelf life on these isn't great. They do say that it has a 12 month shelf life, so maybe that's true. Usually powder products last way longer than 12 months, but cream and sugar I've only had for a few weeks now. This is what I'm wearing on my eyes today, and I don't, like, I'm not gonna pretend that these are somehow as good as a really expensive eyeshadow because they're they're just not like they're they're good they're good for the price i think these are one of those elf products that's good for the price but maybe not a standout product across the board if you were to compare these to natasha denona or you know some other high-end brand but i think as long as you keep that in mind you probably won't be disappointed if you're just looking for something really simple Cream and sugar, I feel like, you know, I can just get a very nice everyday look with this. Um, the lightest shade, I'll kind of just dust that into my crease and my brow bone, like, to start out the look. Um, and then the other matte is obviously quite deep, but sometimes I'll mix that with the lightest shade to get, like, a lighter crease color. And then today I have the bronze color in the center of my lid and the lighter shimmer in the inner part of my lid in the inner corner. And then I have the darker brown in my outer corner and my lower lash line. Um... One of you guys told me that you like to just kind of keep this on your vanity to use for just those basic colors that you might need to tie a look together. Like maybe you're, you know, you're almost done with your eyeshadow look, but you just need a quick inner corner highlight or just a quick deep brown smoky liner, that kind of thing. That's where I see this really coming in handy. And I think for $3, if you know you're going to use these colors all the time, I think that's, you know, a very fair price for this. So I do think these have been a little overhyped, and I did contribute to the hype, especially with ro rose water, because I really did love that quad at first, but just over time I just kind of realized, mm, this really is more... Like, I can tell why this is $3, you know? Now, e.l.f. also makes a few 18 pan palettes. I've tried three of them. Only one of them has stayed in my collection and survived, you know, previous declutters, and that is, of course, Earth and Ocean. I love this palette. I've loved it for such a long time. Such a fun color story if you love blues and greens and earthy tones. And these shadows also perform really well. Of the three 18 pans that I've tried, this one, Opposites Attract, and New Classics, this, I feel like they used a different formula in this palette um, because to me these shadows are better than the ones in New Classics and Opposites Attract. They just feel a little bit higher quality. I know this one also came out after those two, so I think they probably might have tweaked the formula. Opposites Attract, I didn't end up being in love with the color story. After a while, it just wasn't really my style, but also, you know, some of the shadows in there, like especially the shimmers, just weren't anything to write home about. And same with New Classics, which is a great neutral color story, but eventually the packaging broke on that one, and once again, I just wasn't really that impressed with the formula, especially the shimmer formula, which for me, the shimmer formula is like the most important thing. But the shimmers in here, to me, are way better. They're very buttery. It's just the textures of these two. When you dip your finger in, they really do feel smooth and like almost moist. So I know I, I haven't shut up about this palette, but um, it's really good. Okay, another product that gets so much hype. This is the Brow Lift from e.l.f. And the first time I tried this, I was like, this is pretty good, I think. Like, I think it's giving me some good hold. Um, ever since then, I just really, I just think this is just too much trouble for me. So it's a clear gel in there, and what they say to do is dip a clean spoolie directly in there, which I don't know about you, but I don't clean my spoolies every day, so pretty impossible to always have a clean spoolie on hand. But, you know, I don't want to get dirt in there from a dirty spoolie, so what I'll do, I did buy the brow lift applicator that goes with it, just so that I could get the full experience, and what I'll typically do is scoop a little bit of it out with the flat end of this, and then kind of smear it into the lid, <laughs> and then I'll go in with my spoolie. I'll usually, you're supposed to like bend it like this kind of. Work it into the spoolie and then work it into my brows. Most of the time when I use this though, it starts to look white in my brows as I'm working it through, which granted is probably because I do wear mineral sunscreen. And even when I have the sunscreen worked into my skin and it doesn't look white, once I start applying this, I guess as it mixes in, you know, inevitably some sunscreen is going to get into my eyebrows when I apply it and it's almost like it mixes with that and it turns white. I, I'm guessing that's why. And then you're supposed to push 
the brows down to kind of glue them to your face with this flat spatula looking thing at the end. And at first you look like you have your brows laminated, like they really are just like stuck to your face. And when I first apply it, it really does feel like my brows are going to stay like that. But as the day goes on, and I do have kind of unruly brow hairs, like my brow hairs, they're kind of like wavy just as it is, like the hairs themselves are kind of wavy. So they don't like to stay flat on my face. And as the day goes on, my brow hairs do fall with this. So I just think like if this kept my brows in place, all day, then I think it would be worth the extra hassle of, you know, the kind of annoying process of applying it. But the fact that by the end of the day, a lot of my brow hairs are just kind of drooping. So I'm I'm kind of over this. I'm not I'm not really not really into it. I sort of dread using it. <laughs> Another one, this is a $3 product from them, the Shape and Stay Brow Wax Pencil. This is a clear wax crayon. I was really into this when I first got it. Then I kind of put it aside for a little while as I was trying the brow lift and some other things. I recently pulled it back out. This is a good product. It's not going to glue your brows in place or hold them down all day, but it does. What I like to do with this is just work it through my brows before I fill them in. It kind of gets them into the shape I want, and then I do feel like, if especially if I'm using something like my ABH Dip Brow Pomade to fill my brows in, it almost the product almost goes in smoother and I do feel like this gives my brows a little bit of hold not a ton of hold like nothing near the NYX that gets stick it or anything like that but for a day where I don't really want my brows to be like crunchy this is a good product but it's not gonna like freeze your brows into place or anything <laughs> now there's also the elf wow brow which I've gone through two tubes of this in the past this is a great tinted brow gel. It has little fibers to it and I really liked that brow gel when I had it I probably will eventually repurchase it once I need a new brow gel, which will be a while at this point, but I don't think that one's a stronghold brow gel either, but it does just give your brows a little bit of a fluffy look and it tints them a little bit. It has a really nice small brush so you can easily control where it's going and it's not going to get all outside the lines of your brows. So it's a nice tinted brow gel that's not too messy, but also just know it's it doesn't have tremendously strong hold. Like, it's a pretty light hold brow gel, I would say. Uh, it's more so just to kind of fluff up your brows and work them into place after you've filled them in, and that's about it. But I think for $5, it's a good brow gel. The only mascara I've tried from e.l.f. in recent years, at least that hasn't been discontinued, <laughs> you might remember I loved the Keep Your Curl mascara a couple of years ago. That was such a good mascara. They discontinued it, so that one is gone. I then tried their newer Lash It Loud mascara, and I regretted it. It was... It was not good. It smudged like crazy on me. It was a mess. And on top of that, it just didn't do anything for my lashes. So that was a huge miss for me. Um, I know e.l.f. has quite a few new mascaras. I haven't really felt like trying any of them because I just, I don't, I had such a bad experience with the Lash It Loud. And I'm also annoyed at them for discontinuing my favorite ones. So I just haven't tried any of their others. But let me know if you do have a favorite mascara from e.l.f especially if you are prone to smudging. If you found one that doesn't smudge, I would definitely be curious to know. All right, next for lip products. I've tried quite a few of their lip products, but let's start with my favorite. This is what I'm wearing currently, actually. This is their Hydrating Core Lip Shine in the shade Happy. I'm gonna reapply a little right now. This is like a My Lips But Better shade. This is the kind of thing that I would wanna keep in my purse, just keep with me on the go. Anytime I feel like I could use a little lip product, just throw it on. It's super comfy. It feels like a lip balm. They smell like faintly like watermelon Jolly Ranchers, but it's a very mild scent and I can't really taste it. It doesn't like sting the back of my throat or anything. So to me, the scent is very pleasant. I also have the shade Cheery, which I was wearing so much back in like the spring and summer. This is a beautiful, soft coral shade. It's like a soft reddish coral, you know? It's not very pink, which I like. I prefer more of like a reddish orangey coral. And you can see I've actually used quite a bit of that. It does have a little heart shape in the middle, which is just cute. And that it's like a clear core that that's supposed to be like the hydrating core. I would think of these as a tinted lip balm. Of course, they don't have long staying power or anything like that. They're just meant to be kind of a comfy tinted lip product and they just feel really like it just feels like I'm wearing a lip balm right now. So this has been one of my favorite types of lip products to wear recently. Just a just a low maintenance lip is what I've been really into. These are one of my top top favorite 
products for Melt, I'd have to say. I haven't yet tried their Sheer Slick lipsticks. I imagine they're similar to these, but they don't have that heart-shaped core. A more traditional lipstick from e.l.f. is their Seriously Satin lipstick. These are 3 to $4 depending on where you buy them. And I have the shades Cream, Nectar, and Persimmon. One thing to keep in mind, like most of the cheaper e.l.f. products, the packaging on these is almost certainly going to break before you use them up. Like for, for me with Cream, I taped the, the bottom of the lid so that it wouldn't crack because you can see it was on the verge of falling apart. So definitely don't expect anything much from this packaging. But what I think is great about such an affordable lipstick is it's a good way to play around with different colors that maybe you wouldn't normally try or colors that you know you're not going to wear very often. Like I know I'm not going to wear a bright orange lipstick very often so I don't want to spend a lot of money on one but this is a fun color to have in the summertime. You know I really do like to play around with like a red orange like this. But then with that being said the shade Nectar is one that I wear all the time and I just love it. This is a nice warm nude, but it's also not too brown. So it's really, I don't know, I just find it very flattering on my skin tone. I really like it in the fall, especially. And the cream is a very light nude. Now this is way too light for me to wear like on its own on my lips, but I like it in the center of my lips to just add a little bit of dimension. They have a lot of fun colors in this line. It's a nice way to, you know, experiment with different colors and not break the bank. And I also think the formula is very nice. They're not very moisturizing I wouldn't say. They're definitely more of a matte finish. They, they, call this, they call it a satin finish and it's not a complete flat matte but it is, it's, it's a pretty matte look on your lips. A lip product from e.l.f. that I did not enjoy was the Ride or Die Lip Balm. I had the clear one which was in the mint flavor. I haven't tried any of the tinted ones. Maybe I would like those more but the mint flavor, it dried out my lips like most minty lip balms do so I learned my lesson with that. I just have to stay away from minty lip products because they almost always dry out my lips, which is the opposite of what a lip balm is supposed to do. Not only that, it was so thick, like just so thick. It was like you're squeezing like pure Vaseline out of a tube and the opening of the tube was like really small and it was just not fun. So I at least wouldn't recommend the clear ride or die lip balm. Their glossy lip stain is another somewhat newer release of theirs. I have this in the shade Coral Cutie which is a really fun juicy orange color. Unfortunately, now this is the only shade of this that I've tried, but unfortunately the, the stain just does not last on my lips. Now maybe some of the deeper shades in this line would last longer, but with this, it looks really good when I first apply it. I really like the texture. It has like a cooling sensation to it, not in a minty way, but just like it feels cold on your lips, which I like. I feel like it's just kind of refreshing. And it's a really nice, thin, almost watery gel type of formula. It feels really nice. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not like a thick gloss or anything, but it does have a shine. Once that shine wears off, the tint, the, the stain, whatever you want to call it, it only lasts for like maybe an hour though. Like if, if, if you're going to be eating or drinking, the stain is going to be gone. But for me, what I look for in a lip stain is long-lasting color. Like I want that color to stay on even after the shine has worn off. I want the color to stay on my lips and last, you know, at least for a few hours, <laughs> if not all day. Uh, so unfortunately, I just don't think this achieves the goal of what it is supposed to do. But I would be curious if you've tried any of the other shades of this. Does Do those shades have better staying power than Coral Cutie? Because maybe I just chose the one shade that doesn't last well. I, that could be the case. The e.l.f. Lip Plumping Glosses are one of my favorite gloss formulas at the drugstore. They do have a little bit of that cool plumping sort of tingle. It's nothing painful. And like I always say about any lip plumping gloss formula, these are not going to dramatically change the size of your lips. I do think that it gives a slight plumping effect, but nothing, nothing major. I have the shade Champagne Glam here. My favorite shade in this formula though, at least that I've tried, is Pink Cosmo, which I've also used up. I'm noticing now I've used up a lot of my e.l.f. products, which makes me very proud. Pink Cosmo is just like the perfect milky pink gloss. But Champagne Glam is a beautiful, like, shimmery kind of topper gloss color. And what I like about these glosses, they do have some thickness to them, but they're not like stringy or anything like that. You're, you're not gonna have like strings when you open your mouth, <laughs> you know. This is an e.l.f. product that is not just good for the price, it's just a really good gloss all around. If you don't mind a little bit of a plumping sort of tingle to your lip glosses, I do really love this formula. 
The lip lacquers from e.l.f. are like half the price of the lip plumping glosses. Now those don't have a plumping feel. Those are a much thinner gloss formula. I used to have the shade Fantasy, which was actually very similar to Champagne Glam, which is why it didn't survive my like big moving declutter. But it was a really nice formula. I do just prefer something a little bit thicker if it means it's going to be more long wearing on me. And I did feel like the lip lacquer, it just... It didn't last very long on my lips, which most glosses aren't going to last that long, but it was just a little too thin, not quite glossy enough. It was a much more subtle shine that it gave, but if that sounds like something you would like, you could save like three bucks and get that instead of the plumping gloss. So hopefully this gave you a better idea of what is worth trying and what's worth skipping. I do think even though it's such an affordable brand, you still want to be careful not to go crazy and buy too much just because the prices are low because those little tiny purchases, they really do add up. You know, if you added up the cost of all the e.l.f. products I've bought over the years that I didn't end up liking, it's going to add up to be a significant chunk of money that I probably could have used to fill up my gas tank or something. So definitely still want to be careful with your purchases, even if you are shopping from such an affordable brand. But thank you so much for spending some of your day watching my video. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do want to remind you, I also do have a Patreon and YouTube memberships if you would like to support me and go above and beyond. Uh, I do upload an extra video over there every month and I'd love to see you there as well. But otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.